brake bands are an essential part of any goods train. They help keep trucks in order and have powerful brakes to stop runaways. Most brake vans are very helpful like towed. But others, as we've seen before, can be just as troublesome as the trucks, maybe even worse. In Vickerstown, there's a little brake van named Bruno. He isn't troublesome in the least, but he is still very different from other brake vans. He knows all the train schedules along the main line and likes to recite them to himself. If anything disrupts the schedule, Bruno becomes extremely worried and uncomfortable. Bruno doesn't like being in the station. It is loud and busy, full of engines coming and going and bustling people running across the platforms. He prefers staying in the yard where it's quiet and tidy and everything is right where it belongs. He also likes when Rosie is in the yard. There were old friends who came from the same railway. Rosie looks out for Bruno and likes to see him happy and comfortable. Hey Bruno! Any important trains coming in today? There are two passenger trains from Gordon and Rebecca and a heavy goods train from Murdoch coming today. Spencer is also coming to visit Sodor with the Duke and Duchess of Boxford again. Ah! Another successful express run. So, Bruno, my dear brake fan, how'd I do today? <laughs> you were four minutes early, Gordon, same as you were yesterday and the day before. Ha! Huh. Perfect as usual. Thank you, Bruno. Where would we be without you? Well, you still be too big for your buffers, that's for sure. <laughs> what cheek! But, um, Rosie, Gordon is a big engine, so isn't he already bigger than his buffers? <laughs> it just means that Gordon can be a little too boastful. I suppose, but he's still a hard worker, so maybe we should give him a break? <laughs> it was true, there wasn't any other brake van like Bruno on all of Sodor. One morning, Devious Diesel pulled into the yard. He looked especially grumpy today. Morning, Diesel. Oh, hello, Rosie. How's your fancy new piloting job? Oh, it's great, but I miss that warm, sunny face of yours. My, don't you look cheerful today. Oh, I'm bursting with joy. Charlie was supposed to pick up building supplies for the goods yard near Ulfstead, but his valve burst, so I'm the one who has to deliver them. Like I don't have enough work to do. How did his valve burst? Trust me, he always finds a way. Is the train ready or what? <laughs> All says, your highness. It just needs a brake van. Fair brake vans. Who needs them? I'm built for strength and can stop just as well without a van. Maybe even more so. Yes. But what'll Sir Topham Hatt say when he sees you running the rails without a brake van? Diesel moaned. Like it or not, he knew Rosie was right. And so he looked around the yard. 
There were plenty of coaches and trucks, but there were no brake vans to be found. No brake vans, save one. Hmm, he looks strong enough. I'll take Bruno. Bruno? Um, I don't know if that's the best. Bruno's never seen that part of Soda before. He can get a little nervous around new things. I don't want him going where he doesn't feel safe. What? You don't think I can be safe? <laughs> On second thought, don't answer that. Anyway, you said I need a brake van, and Bruno's the only one available. So either you trust me with him, or you can be the one to tell Sir Topham Hatt that you let me travel without a brake van. Rosie didn't have the heart to answer. Now Rosie was irritated. Of course Diesel would try to get his way. As much as she didn't want to admit it, he had a point. She couldn't let him leave without a brake van. But she was worried about Bruno. Well, first we better tell Bruno. Whatever gets me out of here soon. Okay, next passenger train coming in today will be Kana from Manchester at two o'clock sharp. There's some pipes for Barrow that are coming in at eleven thirty sharp. Um, Bruno, hmm? Diesel wants you to be his brake van for his delivery on the Olstead branch. Would you be alright with that? Uh, oh, I... I've never been to Olfstead or any other part of Sodor. It's such a big island. I'm such a small brake van. And it can be pretty noisy. Is Ulfstead a noisy branch line? Fair, please. I've heard mice that are louder than that branch line. Nothing ever happens on it. Uh, I mean, uh, it'll be fun, Bruno. Jolly good fun. Yes, there's villages and the castle and the castle. And there's a beautiful lake. Nice. Calm and peaceful. You can take a look at that if you don't feel well, Bruno. Bruno pondered. He did like lakes. They always helped him calm down if things got too busy in his head. Hmm. Well, is this an important delivery? It's important enough that if I don't leave now, I'll be late. L l late? That means we're behind schedule. Okay, Diesel, I'll help you. <laughs> Get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be just fine, Bruno. Soto is full of nice engines, and Diesel will take good care of you. If he knows what's good for him. <laughs> just leave it to me. Don't forget, you're talking to the best shunter on all of Sodor. Before long, Diesel and Bruno were rolling along the Ulster branch. Bruno was still a little nervous about the new sights and sounds he passed along the way. Luckily, it wasn't very loud or chaotic. And there were friendly people and engines along the way. When they all said hello to him, Bruno felt a little shy 
So he didn't say it back. Diesel just sniffed. Nobody said hi to him, but he didn't care. He just wanted to finish the job so he can go back to his shed. Things were going well until they had to stop by Toby's village. Harold the helicopter was there dropping off medical supplies for the villagers. He had bad news. Take care, old chaps. Some rocks on the cliffside were loosened by rain. <gasps> but if, if the rocks are loose, th they could cause a landslide. And then, then the tracks will be blocked and we'll fall behind schedule. Precisely. Uh, but we have an important delivery to make. It should be safe for now. But any sign of falling rocks and you're to come straight back. <laughs> We're not scared of a few measly pebbles, are we, Bruno? But, Diesel, those aren't a few measly pebbles. It's a lot of pebbles, and bigger rocks, too. Th 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 they could knock us off the rails if we're not careful. Glad to see one of you talking sense. Diesel ignored the two and set off again. Soon, they approached the bridge that lay just before the cliffside. Diesel tried to pick up speed as they ventured across the bridge. D Diesel, we shouldn't go so fast by the cliffs. Harold says it isn't safe. Bah! That whirly bird overreacts to every little thing. If it's really so dangerous, then the sooner we're past it, the safer we'll be. But if we go too fast, we'll make the rails shake, and that'll be loud. We could cause a landslide. But Diesel wasn't listening. He rounded the bend as fast as he could. He felt very pleased with himself as he noticed the other side coming towards him. Ow! What the... Uh-oh! I know just what to do. What in blazes are you doing? We're almost through! We are taking a break! Now we're stuck! How could Bruno be so stupid? Why didn't I just go without a brake van? Rosie's going to get an earful from me if we ever get out of here. Um, Bruno? Are you all right? <sighs> Harvey? Indeed, coming from the other way was Harvey the crane engine. He was working nearby and came to help. Fluttering cranes, are you two all right? We've been better. Bruno's falling apart at the seams, and I don't know how to make him stop. Oh dear, Rosie told me about this. Poor lad. He needs something calm and relaxed to help him focus. Try having him look at something peaceful. Peaceful? What can possibly be peaceful about this? Maybe if you stop grumbling, you'll find something. And there's a beautiful lake, nice, calm, and peaceful. You can take a look at that if you don't feel well, Bruno. 
Look there, Bruno. It's yonder leg Rosie mentioned. Remember? <sighs> That's better. Is everything all right now? I... I don't think so, but... I'm still sad about the delivery. They're waiting for us at Ulfstead, and... We're not on time. Oh, that's no problem. I'll clear these rocks away for ya. Just sit tight and take a wee break. <laughs> but I can't take a break, Harvey. I'm already a brake van. <laughs> oh, I'm surrounded by comedians. I say, Bruno, mind telling us what happened back there? Well, the, the rocks fell. There was so much noise and vibrating that... No, no, no. I mean after that. You were having rummy breathing going on, and you were squirming and shaking. It was quite... unsettling. I... I can't explain it, Diesel. Sometimes if things get too crazy or loud, or if something's not going right, I get very nervous and everything starts to get blurry. I like things calm and orderly, not loud and chaotic. I like when things are right on schedule, not running late. But maybe we could have made it through if I didn't try to stop us. Actually, I think you did the right thing, Bruno. Any further and it could be much worse for both of you. Wait, didn't someone warn you that the cliffs weren't safe? Harold might have said something, but I thought we could outrun the rocks, so... Well, quite. In no time the line was cleared again, and Harvey helped Diesel and Bruno to the yard. They followed on slowly and carefully. Diesel was unusually quiet the whole way, too embarrassed to utter a word. Soon enough, the three of them pulled into the goods yard. Sir Topham Hat was there waiting for them. He looks sternly at Diesel. Well, Diesel, what's this I hear about you thinking you could outrun falling rocks? Diesel sighed, trying to think of an excuse, but nothing came out. Sir, don't be too mad at him. Diesel just wanted us to make it on schedule, sir. He thought you would be cross if we were late. I appreciate the thought, Bruno. But safety is more important than a schedule. If someone tells you to be careful, you would do well not to charge through an unsafe area like a steamroller. But, wait a minute. Diesel isn't a steamroller, sir. He's a shunter. His job is to shunt and carry trucks, not crush rocks. <clears throat> what I mean, Bruno, is that Diesel should have been more careful about the cliffs, as Harold suggested. Oh, yes, sir. If it helps, sir, Diesel did help calm Bruno down when he was panicking. Oh, did he now? Yes. Yes, he did. My head got loud and very busy, but... And everything got all blurry, and all I could think about was how we were off schedule. But then Diesel told me to look at the lake, and I felt better. Much better. 
Well, Harvey came up with the idea, and Rosie did say Bruno would admire the lake. Other than that, I didn't know what to do. I don't know a lot of brig fans like Bruno. Well, that's quite all right, Diesel. It is hard to know what to do in these type of situations. When it comes to someone like Bruno, the best thing you can do is to be patient and understanding. I'm barely either of those, sir. Well, you were when you needed Bruno to be, and that is all that matters. And from the sound of it, Bruno was there when you needed him most. I, Bruno, you're a hero. I, I am. Y you really think I am? Yes, I'd say you are, Bruno. Would there were more brake vans or trucks like you? <laughs> yeah, there's not enough of me to go around. <laughs> 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 Since that day, Diesel and Bruno are now firm friends. Diesel can still be devious, but he always makes sure to leave Bruno out of his tricks. He even asks Bruno to be his brake van whenever he can. With Bruno, as a reward for all his hard work, his guard and some of the workmen fashioned him a set of earmuffs made of recycled machine parts. If Bruno needs some quiet time, he asks his guard to fit them across his frames, and they drown out the chaotic sounds of the outside world. Rosie let him test them out the first day he got them, while she had a long talk with Diesel. A long, loud, and very angry talk. Diesel wish he had those earmuffs now, because unlike Bruno, he heard Rosie loud and clear. Thank you. 